Hey, it's Andrew Huang. It's been a long time, but today is Theory Thursday. Okay, first things first. So congratulations to Mezba on winning our recent giveaway. I'm gonna send you this Moog Matriarch right now. Yeah, think that's gonna make it. Uh, so make sure you follow me on social media, watch all my YouTube videos, cause you never know when I'm gonna do another giveaway. So that is the cord that we're looking at today. It is very pretty, very weird, and very rare. Uh, I've been looking for this to appear in any music that I listened to for years, and it's never popped up. Um, but I know that all of you have heard it, because... I use it at the end of the Theory Thursday intro. Now, just now, I was playing it with five sharps, just to make it extra spicy, but uh, let me move it around a bit and uh, see if you can spot anything interesting about it. I never like doing this because every music theory example is in C major, but C major is actually the best key for this example. Uh, let me show you this chord. Let's break it down. So we were playing a C major, C, E, and G. Oh, there's an ant on the ground. Spring has sprung. Sorry, C major. And then on top, we're adding a ninth D, a sharp 11th, F sharp, and a 13 A. That's technically what's going on. It's a C major chord with a nine, a sharp 11, and a 13, uh, or you might call it a C13 sharp 11 without the seven. I promise I'm gonna stop being needlessly technical very soon. I just wanna, you know, show you what we call it and everything. But a C13 would be C, E, G, B flat, D, F, and A. We are sharpening that F, the uh, 11, or the, it's the fourth, but it's an octave up, so it's an 11 sharpening that F to an F sharp, and we are removing that B flat. So we have this very pretty, kind of odd chord. Forgetting about the nerdy lingo though, a more fun and interesting way to think about it is that it is two different major chords being played at the same time. We've got a C major down here. And up top, we've got a D major. So D major is just one whole tone away from C major, but we're playing it an octave up. Now, I have been thinking about this chord for years, maybe, maybe 10 years. Uh, and I first discovered it because I was taking pedal steel lessons from this great guy in Toronto, Burke Carroll. He showed me this thing one day, I can't remember why, but it just blew my mind. He said, sometimes at the very end of a song, uh, to make things jazzy, if you've got the whole band playing the tonic chord, in this case, let's say it was C, the pedal steel would just play a D major would just move up a whole tone and play the chord there just for like a cool jazzy ending chord and I love the sound of this chord it's one of my favorite things but I've never really found a use for it outside of ending a song in a jazzy way and um, I've been kind of on the hunt for it ever since that pedal steel lesson where I'm like where else would people use this chord? And I have not seen anyone use it in the wild, but it's a beautiful sound. And I feel like there's gotta be other musical applications for it. That is something that I would like to explore a little later with you. Um, but right now, let's, let's break down why this sounds so nice, uh, but also so odd. Now, the main thing that I think lends this chord its weirdness is that sharp four. Sharp 11, I guess, technically, if you're if you're playing it up the octave there. Um, so that's got that like Lydian flavor, you know, uh, the Lydian scale, the, the sharpened four is kind of the, the defining characteristic. And that on its own has, you know, kind of this crunchy sound to it. But interestingly, I think adding these additional notes to it makes it more consonant. In a weird and rare way, I feel like adding more notes reduces the amount of clashing because that D and A forming the major chord with the F sharp, there's a lot more of these overtone relationships that are working there. And so instead of having one kind of weird note, you have a couple extra more consonant notes, notes that are more consonant with the bass chord than this one. 
and also notes that are more consonant with this note. So I thought that was interesting because usually adding more notes to a chord increases rather than decreases the tension. Uh, and there's something else that I want to show you, which is uh, if you play kind of a cluster version of this chord, so you've got your C major chord and your D major chord up the octave. If we just keep that D major in the original octave and play that together, yucky. But opening it up with a bit more space, playing the exact same notes further apart increases the consonants. Now while it's cool that it's these two major chords spread apart by an octave, and it is interesting to think about it that way, it's not really two major chords, you know? It is a C chord with some spicy stuff on top. But this did get me thinking that this is kind of a neat way to come up with chords that you probably haven't used before. Uh, the first thing I tried was mixing up the major and minor. So here is a major on the bottom and minor on top. Not really great because of this minor ninth clash here with the E and the F, but minor on the bottom and minor on top. That's a nice one. That's close to a chord that I really like to use, which is a minor 11. That one works really great in a lot of places. Here we're taking away that seventh, the B flat, and we're making it an A, up an octave. What other versions do we have? We have minor on the bottom and major on top. That one reminds me of kind of uh, like that James Bondy chord. What is it? Kind of mixed minor and major feels going on. And then, wait, did we do all of them? We have major and major, major and minor, minor and major, minor and minor. Yeah, we did them all. Well, we did all of the version of this exercise where the two chords are one tone apart, but you could also do any number of tones apart. It feels like after hearing a lot of complex chords, most of them just sound much more okay than they ever would if you just heard them out of the blue. Um, so maybe that's the best context for this chord that we're talking about today. It's just like, use it with lots of other insane chords. But getting back to this here, it's just such a beautiful sound and I feel like there's gotta be more uses for it than just the end of a jazzy song. And so what I wanna leave you with today and what I'm gonna revisit in a future video is um, I wanna ask you to do some homework. In the description, there will be some details on how to submit a piece of music. I wanna hear what people do with this chord that literally I've never heard used by anyone except Burke giving me this pedal steel lesson. And um, yeah, I just wanna hear it in musical context. I wanna see what kind of role it can play. I'm gonna try some stuff myself and show you what I come up with as well as feature some of my favorites in a future video. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had answers for you in this video, but I'm just starting to decide that I need to explore this chord. I need to like come to some answers with it. And I feel like with your help, it'll just be so much better than what I try on my own. But uh, yeah, we will revisit this in a month or two on this channel. And uh, yeah, details in the description about how you can submit music for me to check out using. The 13, sharp 11, no seven, uh, and bonus points if you don't use the C version of it. All right, I'm Andrew Huang. This has been Theory Thursday. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.